This is questions 62 through 65 of the June 2015 Chemistry Regents exam. Try to answer the questions yourself. Make sure you have your reference tables and a calculator. Hit the pause button and then come back for answers and explanations. Okay, let's take a look. Question 62. Identify the decay mode of potassium-37. Now, this isn't something that you have to memorize, and you'll notice that the information for questions 62 through 65 starts here. But if you go back and you read it and reread it and look at the headings for the data table, you realize there's no decay mode here. So that means it's in the reference tables. So start taking a look in the reference tables. If you've already done this, good for you. And if you haven't found it, maybe pause the video again, see if you can find it. Okay, so let's take a look. Reference table N under selected radioisotopes. Notice there's a column for decay mode. Now the decay mode is different depending on the radioisotope. If I go back to the question, we're looking for potassium-37. So I go right here, I find potassium-37, and here it is. It's what's called a positron or positron decay. You could put the symbol. You could also put a positron. The other symbol looks like this. Or you could just copy it right from the table or it's positron decay. Let's look at question 63. Complete a nuclear equation in your answer booklet for the decay of potassium 40 by writing a notation for the missing nuclide. What I did was I put the what would uh, you would see on the answer sheet here at the bottom. So what you need to do is fill it in. Okay. Now, when you balance nuclear equations, the numbers on the top have to be equal, and then the numbers on the bottom. In other words, 40 is equal to 0 plus what number? Obviously, it's 40. So that's my mass number. On the bottom, 19 is equal to a minus 1 plus what number? Now, be careful. This is beta minus decay. So you have to realize that the um, bottom number is 20. 20 minus 1 is equal to 19. It is not 18. That's where kids make a mistake. Then you need to look up on the periodic table what's element 20, and that is calcium. So you could have wrote calcium just like you see it here. You could have wrote uh, calcium-40, or CA-40 would be an appropriate answer for 63. Let's go to 64. 64, it says, determine the fraction of the original sample of potassium-42 that remains unchanged after 24.72 hours. Well, this is a decay-type question. What I like to do is I like to set up for 64. I'll put it in green, a chart. That would be mass and then time. Okay. You're looking for the fraction of the original sample. So what you're doing is you're going to start with a mass of 1. So that's at time 0. Every time you hit a half-life, now what happens, of course, is that you have half of what you started with. So, of course, half of 1 is a half. So now we have to take a look. 24.72 hours. Now that's the total time, 24 0.72, and we want to figure out what's the mass remaining then. Well, how do I get from 0 to 24.72 hours? I need the half-life of potassium-42. I'm going back to that same table, and now I'm looking for potassium-42, and instead of decay mode, what am I looking for here? I'm looking for half-life. So it's right here, 12.36 hours. So if I go back, it's 12.36 hours is my half-life. So if 12.36 hours goes by, I have half of what I originally had. 
if another 12.36 hours goes by, guess what? I have half of a half, which is a quarter. And there's my answer, one quarter. Okay, you could have put 25%, you could have put 0.25, but the fraction really is one quarter here. Okay, finally, for question 65, I'm going to have to erase a bunch of things here so that you can see this. You're asked to show a numerical setup for question 65, and you're dealing with calculating an atomic mass. So all that information that's in this table here, above question 62, you're finally using. And in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this kind of out of our way so we have a little more room. Okay, so let's take a look. So to show a numerical setup. So what do I have? Remember, atomic mass determination is a weighted average. Meaning, I'm not just going to add up all of the atomic masses and divide by 3. So if we take a look over here, I have three isotopes, and I have to take into account the percent for each one that's found in nature. So what I like to have my students do is have an equation, and they're going to plug into the equation. So it's atomic mass, and this equation, by the way, is not on the reference table. This is one I just have them know. Your teacher might have come up with something else. I don't care as long as you can do this. This shows up all the time. So I'm going to have the mass of isotope 1 times the percent of isotope 1 divided by 100 plus, and now it's the mass of isotope 2. times the percent of isotope 2 divided by 100. I think you get the picture. And in this case, there's a third one, so you do exactly the same thing. Once you figure it out, you just would add them up. Now, it's only asking in the question for a numerical setup. In other words, it's looking for the plug-in. You don't have to actually solve for it. They just are looking for the plug-in. In other words, let's take a look. Let me do this in... I'll do it in black. So, the mass of isotope 1, in other words, potassium 39. The mass is 38.96 times the percent is 93.26 divided by 100 plus mass of isotope 2, 39.96 times 0.01 divided by 100 plus the same thing now for isotope 3, which the mass is 40.96 times 6.73 divided by 100. That is an acceptable numerical setup. Some of you sometimes might have um, maybe slide the decimal over and then get rid of divide by 100. That's up to you. I think it's just easier to plug in the numbers and then if you just have to do the setup, here's your setup. This is New York Chem Coach. Check out www.newyorkchemcoach.com uh, for more information.